Hi, I'm Mr. V, and today I'm talking about illustrative mathematics, chapter 6, which is coordinate geometry, and this is lesson 11, about perpendicular lines in a plane. <clears throat> Before I begin our discussion from this unit, I would like to talk about the homework from the previous night, a couple of questions from it. First is to select all the lines that are parallel to this line. <clears throat> You'll notice that some of these are in a form that you might recognize. I'm going to say that probably the most common form that you're used to seeing is the slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope. If I can determine the slope, if I could rewrite this in that form, then I could find what the slope is by just looking at the equation. So <clears throat> I will subtract 2x from both sides. And when I do that, I get... Um, 5y is equal to negative 2x plus 8. When I divide both sides by 5, I get y is equal to negative 2 fifths times x plus 8 fifths. Now, I don't need to know about the 8 fifths. What I'm looking for is this right here. This is my slope. My slope of this line is equal to negative 2 over 5. And any line that is parallel will have this for a slope as well. Here, we have a positive 2 over 5. This does not match. This is a negative 2 over 5. This one does match. Here we have, this is in this form of the uh, point slope form. y minus k is equal to m times x minus h, where hk is a point on the line. m is the slope. This is my slope. This does match. And we have this does not match. This is my slope, but this one does. And then we have this last equation. And I don't know what the slope of it is. This is in standard form, which is ax plus by is equal to c. There are different ways of writing the line. This is still a line. Is it? Does it have a slope of negative 2 fifths? Let's see. We have, um, if I subtract 10x from both sides, so I have, I'll rewrite this in the slope-intercept form, which you are familiar with, the y equals mx plus b. So I subtract 10x from both sides. These are not like terms. So I get 5y is equal to negative 10x plus 40, and divide both sides by 5. Anything you do to the left side of the equation, we do to the right. This is the division property of equality. y is equal to a negative 10 over 5 is 2. And 40 divided by 5 is 8. So this is the slope here. It is not the same as negative 2 over 5. Not parallel. Prove that this is not a parallelogram. Well, these opposite sides are both horizontal. They are parallel. A to B has a slope of 5 over 3. So this is a slope of 5 thirds. If I look at this slope, I go up 5, a rise of 5, and a run of 4. So my slope for DC is 5 over 4, 5 divided by 4, not the same. What we learned yesterday was if two lines are parallel, then they have the same slope. And conversely, if two lines have the same slope, then the lines are parallel. That's a biconditional. It's true in both ways. So it's an if and only if. So two lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. These do not have the same slope, so they are not parallel. What is the equation of a line through these two points? And you may see this later on. I'm going to use this to find the slope. And I want you to watch how I do this because I think this is easier to see than any of the slope formula or any other type of form. You can use this form if you want. My delta x, my change in x, going from 2 to 17, I have to add 15. To go from 12 to 9, I have to subtract 3. Now, my slope is my change in y. I use the delta symbol to mean the change in over the change in x. So that would be negative 3 over 12, which is equal to negative 1 over 4. That is going to be the slope of the line. And I can choose either point. I'll choose this one, to write it in the point-slope form, which is y minus k is equal to m times x minus h, 
where hk is a point. This would be my h, this would be my k, and this is my slope, my m. So when I substitute those values in, I have the equation of the line. y minus 12 is equal to negative 1 over 4 times x minus 2. This is the equation of the line. I could have just as easily substituted these two points in for h and k, and I would still get the same, we get a different, look different, but it would be the same, same line. This is the form. Remember, hk is a point, and m is the slope. This is something to remember. This makes it to where you're not beholden to finding the y-intercept every time. Now, in today's lesson, the objective was to prove that the slopes of perpendicular lines are opposite reciprocals. Opposite means you change the sign. So if it's positive, you change it to negative. If it's negative, you change it to positive. Reciprocal means that you flip it. So if it's A over B, you change it to B over A. It has to be both of these. I can use the slope perpendicular lines to solve problems. That's our goal. So the first thing we did was, <clears throat> it says here, to apply this transformation rule to this, to this figure and tell what happens. And then to describe the transformation. And I'll do that right now on this paper. My A has a coordinate of 0, 0. B is a coordinate of 5, negative 2. C is a coordinate of 6, 0. D is a coordinate of 5, 2. And we are going to apply the transformation. X comma Y goes to, it's going to go to negative Y comma X. So my x values will stay the same as these x values, and I can record those. This one is a 0 x value. This is a 5 x value. This is 6, and this one is going to be 5. The y value is going to change the sign. So this would be negative 0, which is 0. A negative 2, when I change it, is to 2. And then y, when I change it, is 0. And negative 2. So when I plot this, if a prime... I have B prime, C prime, and D prime. And this is a 90 degree rotation. Three things you need to have to have a rotation. You have to have a point you're rotating it around, the number of degrees, and the direction. If you notice this going from A, to, a prime to C prime and A to C, this is along the axis. This is a 90 degree rotation, counterclockwise about point A, okay? Activity synthesis, what do we come up with? Number, here's the conjecture. The conjecture, well, first of all, we need to complete this table. We're gonna look at the slopes of each of our segments from the warm-up and the slope of the image, the translated version. Also answer this question. The image of the warm-up is a 90-degree rotation, the original figure, the counterclockwise direction, about point A, the origin. So each line in the original figure is perpendicular because it's a 90-degree rotation. It's perpendicular to the corresponding image. Use your slope calculations to make a, a conjecture. So we're going to make a conjecture in addition to completing this table. The slope of segment AB is a rise of 2, a run of negative 5, 2 over negative 5. The slope of BC is a rise of 2, a run of 1, 2 over 1. The slope of DC is a negative 2, no, excuse me, it's 2 over negative 1. The slope of DA is going to be a rise of 2, a run of 5, 2 over 5. These, up, these ones here are going to be negative 5 and 2, I'm sorry, positive 5 and 2, positive 5 and 2. Then we have a negative, it's going to be a, rise of 1 and over 2. Here we have a positive rise run. So this would be a positive 1 over 2. And then a negative 5 over 2. When you multiply the, each of these, you get a negative 1. Each of these are going to be perpendicular. My conjecture is that the, the perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. That is, you change the sign and you flip it. Um, 
Opposite means you change the sign. Reciprocal means you flip it. And what do you make of this product is negative one? Well, when you multiply them together, you get negative one. I'm not sure. Let's see. There's at least one exception where this doesn't rule, the rule doesn't fit. So what is the slope of this line? Here, my slope is equal to zero. And what is the slope of this line? Some people say it's zero. It's not. This is a vertical line. It would be x is equal to something. And this has a slope of undefined. So this is not a function. It has no slope. This is the one line that you cannot write in the form y equals mx plus b. It's when it's a vertical line. And what do you get when you multiply undefined times zero? You don't get a number that's an opposite reciprocal. You don't get a negative one like you would if you were doing, if I had two points and I had, um, <clears throat> let's say this is an x value here and a y value. Y value would be the rise. X value would be the run. And if I were looking at the opposite Reciprocal. I'm going to change this to negative y, comma, x, which is the translation we just did. So I'm going to go, instead of going this high, I'm going to go this far in the negative. And instead of going this long in the x direction, I'm going to go this long in the y direction. Notice my slope here is equal to my displacement of the y, which is y over x. And my slope on this line, which is perpendicular, is going to be x over negative y. That doesn't work when it's undefined in 0. That was the big point of this. So here we have some opposite reciprocals, and we want to find out what the opposite reciprocal is, and also um, the product. 4 over 7, I change the sign. It's negative. Negative 5, I change the sign. It's positive. This would be negative. This would be positive. That's what it means to say opposite. Reciprocal, I'm going to flip it. So I get 7 over 4. How do you flip 5? Well, this is the same as 5 over 1, so it's going to be 1 over 5. Here we have 3, or 3 over 1, and you have b over a. So when I multiply these two together, I get negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, and I'm also going to get negative 1 here because I have a negative a over b times b over a. That's going to be a negative ab over a negative over ab which is, this is just a giant 1, negative 1. Prove it. Let's prove our conjecture about the slopes of perpendicular lines for the cases where the lines pass through the origin. So this extends to all non-vertical or horizontal lines, perpendicular lines. Find the slope of a line passing through point AB and the origin. Assume the line is not horizontal. So if I have, here's my graph, and I have a point AB. This has a rise of, in the displacement of B. It has a run of A. So my slope of this line would be the rise divided by the run, B over A. <clears throat> Suppose the line is rotated using the transformation that we did before where we rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. So my negative y and x is what it becomes to. So I'm going to go from x comma y. I'm going to transform that to negative y comma x. Where do you think ab goes to? ab would go to a negative b comma a. So if I'm this far up in the b direction, I'm going to go that far to the left in the b direction, in the x direction, and this far y. That take me to negative b comma a. And my rise on this one, my rise is going to be b, and my run is going to be, I'm sorry, a, this is going to be a. It's the same in length as this one. And in the x direction, it's going to be and the x direction is going to be negative b. So what is the slope of this line? The slope of this line is negative b, is a over negative b. 
And we know that when we multiply b over a times a over negative b, we get negative 1. How does this relate to the original line? It's perpendicular because we know that this is a perpendicular transformation. The slope is the opposite reciprocal, and that's what we just proved. Now we're going to take that. We're not going to do the more. We'll do this activity synthesis. Can your proof through the origin be extended to other lines? Yes, because you can transform or translate from whatever point that is to the origin, so that it would be the same. What is the difference between what you did in the first activity and the second one? In the first activity, we said, that's back over here, we said uh, the slopes of perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal. If, this, if the opposite reciprocal, if the, if the slopes are opposite reciprocals, then the lines are perpendicular. What we did here was we said, if the slopes are, excuse me, not here. What you hear was say, it's the if this and it and that is what it is. So if two lines are perpendicular, then the two lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. The converse is if two lines have opposite reciprocal slopes, then the two lines are perpendicular. So it's if this, then that. And if you switch the arguments, if that, then this, that's the converse. And if they're both true, it's a biconditional, meaning it's an if and only if. So you could say it either way. You could say two lines are perpendicular if and only if they have opposite reciprocal slopes. You could also say two lines have opposite reciprocal slopes if and only if they are perpendicular. That only works if it's true in both directions. So you want to record this in your table. Lines are perpendicular if and only if the slopes are opposite reciprocals. The lesson synthesis here is a we were supposed to write an equation for any line that is perpendicular to this line. And then um, if you're struggling, what, what information do you need? So any line that is perpendicular to this line. So I'm going to do that here. Um, first, I need to know the slope of this line. The slope of this line has a rise of 1, a run of 4. So my slope of L, of L is equal to a rise of 1, a run of 4. What is the perpendicular of this slope? Because we're supposed to draw a line that's perpendicular. So I need the perpendicular. The symbol for perpendicular is an upside down T. I'm going to say the perpendicular to the line L. It's going to be opposite reciprocal. Opposite, I make it a negative because this is positive. Reciprocal, I flip it. So I get negative 4. I need a line with this slope in it. And I need any point on the line. So I'm going to write this in two ways. I could use it through this point. In which case, one, two, three, four. It'll be this line right here. One, two, three, four. Something like that. Now, what is the equation of this line? What two pieces of information do you need to write the equation? We know the slope-intercept form, mx plus b, where if I knew the y-intercept here and the slope, which is this number, then I could just write it. Well, my slope, my y-intercept is 2 if I use this number to go through. So I could write this as y is equal to negative 4, that's my slope, times x plus 2. That's one way of writing it. If I were going to use the point slope form, which is using any point on this line, I would use y minus k is equal to m times x minus h. And I'm going to use the point 0, 2. So I have y minus 2 is equal to negative 4 times x minus 0. Now, is that the same as this? It looks different, but it really is the same. If you add 2 to both sides of the equation, you get y is equal to, and we have a negative 4x, and then I'm adding 2 to both sides, plus 2. You can see that it is the same. It just looks different. And instead of using 0, 2, I could have used 4, 3. I could have used... 8 with 4. I could have used any other numbers as well. That would give me a different y-intercept, though, to get the same intercept if I were to do this starting at a different point. And then there is a lesson summary, which you can read on your own time. Good luck and success.